Okay, I'm going to show you how to render molecular orbital images using a simple script and some software called VMD. So here I have a structure that I optimized using DFT on an HPC. It's a radical uh, which should be located in this position right here. As you can see from my calculation, I have no imaginary frequencies. There were no constraints in this optimization, so this should be a stable minima. This was generated using Gaussian 16 calculation. Uh, we generated it at the PW6B95 uh, with D3BJ dispersion and the DEF2 TZVP basis set. It's a standard input here, and the only things that I need to generate a series of cube files is one, I need the checkpoint file, and I need a successful log calculation or a successful log file. And these two um, files together cr uh, contain all the necessary orbital information that you need in order to generate the molecular orbital images. So I ran this calculation over on our HPC and got those successful outputs and to make the molecular orbital images we're going to use cube files corresponding to each MO uh, or spin density. So the way that I do that is I like to make very high resolution ones to make um, nice quality image files. So uh, we're going to get really high quality images out of this uh, in order to do that, you just need huge cube files, right? So I have a script that you can find on my GitHub called PMO that makes the uh, generation of these very easy. So we'll call it on our file here that I ran already. So these, these are already in this directory um, that I'm in here, and we'll call it on this file that I already ran. So I'm going to point it at the log file, the completed log file, and PMO should pick up everything that it needs. So it's telling you which log file it's working on, it's telling you the name of the fcheck file that it will make and then generate the cubes from, and here it's just checking that everything exists, right? So it's checking that your checkpoint file is complete, um, and then in this case I already have an fcheck file, um, and it's going to create a backup of that, but if you didn't have an fcheck file already, um, this script runs uh, Gaussian's form check utility and creates an fcheck file from your existing checkpoint file. So it's just telling us that our fcheck file is ready here and it's asking us what type of cubes we want to generate. So you have a couple options here and you can do multiple things with this script, right? So in our case, let's go ahead and render the FMOs, so the Homo Lumo. So we'll select option one and press enter and it's telling us now that we've selected Homo Lumo and asking us if we want to do any additional cubes in our calculation. So in this case, yes, we have a radical, so we also want to look at the spin density. So I'm going to select now option three and add that to my list here. So uh, I could also enter a range of MO. So say I'm interested in um, HOMO LUMO and then uh, HOMO minus five, LUMO plus five. I just need to look at my F check file and confirm the orbital numbers. And then I could enter a range here. So I could do, um, let's say the HOMO was 20 and the LUMO was 21. I could enter a range of like 15 to 25 here. And I would capture HOMO LUMO plus all of these other MOs in the same script. So that's that's another option that you could do here. But in our case, we just want to see Homo Lumo and the spin density. So I'm going to select no. And now I'm just going to confirm that I have everything that I want here. So I do press yes. And uh, in this case, this script is also going to generate a sbatch input file. So TAC, the HPC that we use, uses sbatch um, job management. So I have a template file, which you should put in your uh, home directory, wherever you put the PMO script, I'll have a readme that you can see on the GitHub, but this template should be in the same um, folder here. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to specify how many hours. So this is generating about three cubes. These are high, high resolution cubes, so I would expect this job to take somewhere between one and two hours, but just to be safe, um, I'm going to select two hours here. So now my uh, sbatch uh, template should be created. It should contain all of the um, cubes that I need and we'll go ahead and submit it um, just to kind of illustrate how to do it. I already ran this um, for this particular calculation so we don't need this job we'll just go ahead and cancel it here. Um, but the output of this we should have three cube files as an output right so if we check our our file here you should see um, the job name and then like some MO headers so if it's HOMO LUMO you should see HOMO or LUMO these are par particular MO numbers, but the, the file extension should be .cube. And these are really big files, right? So I already downloaded one over here. 
um, a couple here, right? So we'll we'll look at the, the MO and the spin density, so how to render both of these here. So you need to have VMD installed on your computer, and uh, it should open, open up here, and it's a little squirrely of a program, especially when dealing with these large um, image files. They take a long time to load, and they can also crash potentially, right, pretty easily. So uh, like between multiple files, right? So usually what I do is I... Um, kind of delete that or like exit the program and restart the program with a new one, right? So I don't I don't remember which one this is mo28. It's it may be the home one, maybe the lumo I don't remember which one it is um, I rendered this before I had this PMO script So it's a little bit different, but we went ahead and opened it and now we're gonna load it, right? And again, this should take a while um, Just because VMD I think VMD is like a dot 32 program. It's not a not a, or a x64 program so it's a little laggy, but this should open up here in just a second, and we'll go ahead and render the image. Okay, so our molecule um, loaded into VMD here, no problem. And uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to create representations for our um, different phases of orbitals here. So I have a script already that does this, and uh, it's much faster when you're doing a lot of these jobs to just use a script, but we'll also look at how you would do this individually. Okay, so what happened here is I now have um, differently colored phases for uh, my two uh, lobes of the MOs here. So all it's done is it's created isosurfaces. So these these uh, lobes here are just isosurfaces. And we can do this manually, right? So let's, let's pretend we didn't have any of this, okay? So we'll create a new representation, which is CPK, and we'll change it to isosurface here. Okay, so now we have this particular phase, and this this is a good value here, this ISO value 0 0.03, this is a good value here um, that will give us good shapes uh, on the MOs. You may have to change this like 0 0.02, 0 0.04 to get kind of the, the right images for your for your interest, but that's, that's kind of what I like here. So uh, the next thing is probably this will be on a different thing. You want to make sure that this is solid surface and that this last box here is isosurface. Okay, so we have solid surface, isosurface. Um, and then we want to change these, right? So let's make the positive phase in this case, let's make a green two. I always think green two looks nice. And this right now is opaque, right? But maybe you want to see the skeletal structure underneath. So we'll change it. We'll change it to uh, glass three. That way we can see the CPK structure underneath of the MO lobe here. Okay, so that's the positive phase, but we also want the negative phase, right? So we're going to create a new rep here, and basically everything is the same, but we'll just change isosurface here, and we'll change the negative phase to blue. And now, so now we have two of these, right? So this is all I did. That's all my script does, right? Is it just introduces these other things here, and now we have our image. So now we don't want to make sure that our, our kind of orientation of our molecule is good here, so we can kind of see everything. So... Mm, that looks pretty good right there. It's good enough, right? So the next thing is we want to use um, a, a rendering um, technique that's going to give us a nice image, right? I like, kind of like it better like this. Yeah, like that is kind of nice. Um, so here we're going to create tachyon with internal memory, and we're going to find a location to save this in. So let's go ahead and save this here, and we'll call it BMP to make an image file. Oops. Okay, save, and now we'll remove this explorer, and we'll just click start rendering. And on my computer, this doesn't take very long. It may take longer on your computer. I don't know what kind of stuff you're working with over there, right? So uh, now we should get our image, right? So we get this nice quality image here as the output of that. Um, I also said that we could render the spin density, right? So we can do that too. We'll exit out of here. Okay, we'll restart VMD. Just making sure I'm under my time limit here, 15 minutes for YouTube. Okay, so now we also had an output from our calculation, right, of the spin density. So that will be a dash sd.cube. So we'll load that up the same way. I don't know what's happening here. I'm getting some blinkage. This one's taking longer, there we go. Okay, so now we have our image loaded in here. This time we're not doing positive negative phases, we're only doing one phase. So uh, we'll go ahead and select isosurface. So this is what yours will look like, right? So we'll switch this to solid surface. So we just get our solid here. 
and we'll change this to ISO surface only because we don't care about any of that other thing. So here we can see the effect that ISO value has on your calculation. So we'll change this down to 0 0.03. And now it's much more manageable size. And as expected, we have uh, most of the spin density localized on this carbon here, which is kind of what our model chemistry predicted. We have some um, uh, overlap into the conjugated ring system here, kind of at the ortho and para positions as expected. But we want to change this to a different color, right? So depending on your project, you may have different atoms, but I find that usually blue, unless you have nitrogen atoms in your, in your molecule, blue is a pretty good color, right? So blue looks nice is how I differentiate. But say you had nitrogens, right? You could just pick green the same way or yellow or whatever whatever color you're so inclined to pick but same thing we just make everything look nice in our in our picture here to move things around right I'm just pressing T on my on my keyboard to swap to translate mode so that lets me move the molecule if I want to rotate I just press R and now I'm in rotate right so it's two easy ways to do this uh, finally we do the same thing we select tachyon we'll put it in here and pick the SD file extension uh, make a BMP. I think I have like dyslexia this morning. And we'll move this explorer and we'll render our image. And now we have this nice image of our spin density ready to go into our paper. And that's how you do everything, right? So you can render MOs, you can render a range of MOs, you can render spin density, all with this handy PMO script. Uh, it's very easy to do and you get nice quality images out. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Ask any questions in the comments. Thanks.